in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's reading it's the 18th of june 11th sunday in ordinary time it's year a today we have three civil celebrations one father's day is observed on the third sunday of june it honors all fathers grandfathers great grandfathers and father figures for their contribution the day was created to complement mothers day second united nations general assembly on december 21st 2016 designated june 18 as sustainable gastronomy day the objective of this day is to recognize the practices associated with sustainable food consumption especially with the art of collecting and preparing the food we eat third in july 2021 the united nations general assembly proclaimed june 18 as the international day for countering hate speech which will be marked for the first time in 2022 the day aims at promoting interreligious and intercultural dialogue and tolerance in countering hate speech now let's pay attention to the gospel reading of the day a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew chapter 9 verses 36 to chapter 10 verse 8 at that time when jesus saw the crowds he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest and he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction the names of the 12 apostles are these first simon who is called peter and andrew his brother james the son of zebedee and john his brother philip and bartholomew thomas and matthew the tax collector james the son of alphaeus and thaddeus Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him these 12 Jesus sent out instructing them go nowhere among the gentiles and enter no town of the samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel and proclaim as you go say the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick raise the dead cleanse lepers cast out demons you received without paying give without pay the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ dear friends at a formal wedding an usher usually asks friend of the bride or of the groom 
Accordingly, he offers the seat to the guest on the appropriate side of the church. Now it happened so once an usher asked a lady, Are you friend of the bride or the groom? And to his surprise, she replied, Both. And he explained, I am sorry, lady, they did not tell me where the neutrals should sit. That is the way it is with Christ. There are no neutrals. The chosen and sent are to proclaim the good news, heal the sick and perform all the acts that Jesus himself performed to all whom they meet. Therefore, they are now co-workers and co-partners in the plan of Jesus and in the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus has compassion for the crowds. He decides to send out his 12 disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead and proclaim the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus instructs his disciples to freely give what they have received, encouraging them to serve others with love and generosity. This beautiful and touching passage emphasizes the importance of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven on priority basis. In other words, Jesus sends out his disciples to share the message of salvation and reconciliation with others, calling them to repentance and faith in God. Dear friends, in today's gospel, Jesus shares his mission to proclaim the kingdom of heaven with his disciples. The science of the kingdom's presence consists of the work that Jesus has already been doing. The sick are cured, lepers are cleansed, demons are driven out and the dead are raised to life. The disciples are sent to continue doing the work that Jesus has begun. This is a moment of great transition as the focus has shifted from the ministry of Jesus to the work of the community that he has inaugurated. More than any other gospel accounts, Matthew's version elaborates on the work of the church, which is to continue after Jesus' death and resurrection. Furthermore, the gospel reports that Jesus commissions 12 disciples. Many scholars believe that the 12 disciples symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel. It designates, therefore, continuity between Israel and the church. Now, we have a list of the names of the 12 disciples. Interestingly, Matthew also uses the word apostle when referring to the 12. The word apostle means one who is sent. In this context, Matthew is calling attention to the mission that the 12 disciples are being given. They are sent by Jesus to proclaim the kingdom of heaven in word and in deed. Jesus himself is sent by the Father and now as Jesus sends his disciples to continue his work and mission, so too the church is sent by Jesus. The church is his continuing presence on earth. Every member of the church is sent by Jesus to contribute to this mission. The gospel text reminds us that we are not just spectators in the kingdom of God, but collaborators of Jesus, co-workers of Jesus. At the sight of the crowd, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abundant like sheep without a shepherd. He is very much aware that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus sends out these 12 after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demon. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Dear friends, 
the more that we pray over these readings the more they can affect us when we list to the first when we listen to the first reading from the book of exodus we must wonder what was in the minds of god's chosen people when god says i bore you out on eagle wings and brought you here to myself when these chosen people fled from egypt it was a miraculous event in their lives they never really believed that they could be free now when pharaoh's army pursued them they must have been they must have felt that they would be destroyed and yet the sea opened before them and they escaped but that was the beginning then we hear all about their stories of not having enough water not having enough food of the problems of going through the desert and on and on and on this does not sound like being born up on eagle wings and being brought to the mountain of god however this reading tells us about one of the most famous covenants of god with his people in the old testament the sinai covenant through it god made israel his people and offers to guide them towards a great destiny and his people offer obedience if the people are faithful to their promise they will forever be the sacred people god's possession in case they fail due to their human frailty god will still not abandon them but will continue to search for them this is god's way of acting sometimes dear friends we can get caught up in our own sufferings and not see what is really happening if you look at the sufferings of the chosen people in the desert we can't possibly describe it as being born up on eagle wings on the other hand if you look at their escape into freedom and their arriving at the mountain of god we begin to rightly understand the eagle wings they could not have been there if god had not sustained them and helped them dear friends this is surely a part of the lesson of this sunday that we are celebrating we must begin to look at the deeper meaning of history both the history of salvation and our own personal history of walking with god so often we get caught up only in our present sufferings and don't keep an awareness of where god is leading us always god is leading us to encounter his divine presence in today's gospel episode we can also wonder about this good news that jesus asks his apostles to preach they are to go only to the jewish people and to proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is at hand for us this kingdom may not mean very much for the jewish people of the time of jesus it probably meant that the messiah had come and a lot of them would have hoped for freedom from the romans and freedom to live their faith without interference from others for some this kingdom would have meant a reestablishment of the previous kingdom of israel jesus generally means that the kingdom is a presence of god in the world the kingdom is truly present in you and in me when we are following god and trying to be faithful to god's word the kingdom is present within us and when we join with others who are also faithful to the word of god then the kingdom becomes present within the believing community so when jesus sees that lots of people are looking for god and want to follow god he tells us that the harvest is abundant what about our own times are people looking for god are we looking for god am i looking for god this is the challenge an invitation for us today god invites us to seek the kingdom and as we seek then we discover that the kingdom is right here in our midst like the chosen people of exodus we shall suffer on the way to discover the kingdom even though it is right here well let us pray this sunday for a deeper awareness of god's divine presence in our personal lives and in the life of our christian communities let us ask 
that the Holy Spirit will give us the vision to see how God is present in our world. Let us also ask for the gift to see how we have been borne up on evil wings. Let us also be aware that our call and mission must start primarily from within. We must start this mission with ourselves. It must begin in our homes, families and communities, which we call as mission ad intra. Later, the mission can be extended ad extra to others. Through this, Christ reminds us that charity begins at home. This is important because we must first become God's people before becoming God's disciples. Furthermore, if we really love the Lord, we will necessarily become aware of the blessed burden of souls that need to be brought to God. St. Augustine once said, The more only important thing is that Christ be announced, known and loved. He is the one who acts through the apostles of then and now. Finally, dear friends, we can admonish others with the sound of our voice. But if the one who teaches is not inside, our sound is in vain. May he speak to us then inwardly, since within us there is no other teacher except him. Let us today join Jesus and his apostles in carrying out Christ's salvific mission of liberating humanity from slavery of sin and help them in acquiring the true freedom which Christ offers, freedom from moral misery, from sin and from eternal damnation. Let us conclude our reflection with a short prayer. Lord, help us to re-encounter you so that we may become your fervent extensions in our families and societies. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the psalm today reminds us that we are God's people, members of the flock of the Lord. God has made us, we belong to God. Because of God's loving generosity, we are invited into a special relationship with God. Our job is to accept God's favor and do God's will. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord has made known his salvation. Cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. The Lord has made known his salvation. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord has made known his salvation. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. The Lord has made known his salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brother and sister, we thank Reverend Father Ratan Almeida for sharing his reflection with us today. And we wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. And we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially Amelia Matthias Prakash from Abu Dhabi, Jyoti Anisha D'Souza from Mumbai, Mervin Ritwik from Ramaswamy Palya, Bengaluru, Olivia Patrick Joseph from Ahmedabad, Trevoris Fernandez from Kanjur Marg, Mumbai, Elizabeth D'Souza from Kolalgiri. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. And we pray for the departed soul of James Noronna from Mulund, Mumbai. 
May the Lord grant him eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.